Today I'm going to show you a prototype for a software audio station that I've been working on. It's called the Algebraic Audio Station, but I just nicknamed it Stacy for short. So that's the way it works. On the left hand side you have the components grid with a few native components in it. And on the right hand side you have the instance grid, which is currently empty. And what you do is you take components and you place them on the right where you want them. The components are functions which take a number of arguments as inputs and produce one output. So those three components, for example, have zero output inputs and so when you place one you just place its output. On the other hand those components have one input so if I take one I can place the input somewhere and then I place the output. Now those four components take two inputs so when I take one I can place its first and second inputs there and then its output here for example. Note that once they are placed on the instance grid, you can't see where the inputs are. But what you can do is press an instance and it will show you what component it is and where its inputs are located. Okay, I'm going to take everything off the grid. So what do you do with this instance grid? Well, you just take components and wire them together to create circuits. So the top row here uh, of my component grid represent the three inputs to my circuit and the top right corner of the instance grid represents the output of my circuit. So I'm going to do a little magic here. I'm going to use a multiplexer so I can get three outputs. This is the audio output and these we'll see a bit later. So what I'm going to do now is take the audio input of my circuit and put it here and then use a simple wire, which is this component, to plug the audio input to the audio output of my circuit. And so we get music playing, which by the way is uh, from the Exodus original soundtrack album by Morusk. So this here represents a very simple circuit that will pipe its input to its output. Now we're going to use a couple of audio components to transform the signal. So first I'm going to show you this component here which is a delay and I'm going to apply a delay to my input and get a delayed version and then I'm going to use this component here which takes two inputs and adds them together. This component is a mixer so I will add those two signals together, the original and delayed version of my input, and then pipe the output to my audio output on the circuit. And what you get is a very simple delay effect. Now I'm just going to take the audio back normally and I'm going to use a new component which is this one, which is a damper or negative gain, which will reduce the volume of my audio. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to first use a delay like this and then damp my signal and then delay it again and damp it again and then delay and damper. And then those four signals here which are each time delayed and dampened, I'm going to add them together. So I'm going to use one mixer to add those two together and then one mixer to add those two together and finally one my mixer to add those two together and pipe this into uh, the audio output of my circuit. And now what you get um, is a very simple um, finite impulse response or FIR filter which just makes an echo. So I'm going to take the straight input again. Now I'm going to show you pretty much the same thing but this time I'm going to make a loop. So I use my mixer here and then I'm going to send my audio input to one leg of my mixer and the output to the output of my circuit. So the signal just goes like this right now. And I have a free input here that I'm going to use to make a loop. 
So I'm going to send the output of my mixer using a delay and another delay and then I'm going to use a damper. And what you get now is uh, a different kind of filter called an infinite impulse response filter of R I I R filter, which makes another echo. Okay. So, so far what we've seen is uh, components that work on audio signals. Now there is a different type of signal that we are going to need, which I call user interface signals or UI signals. And what happens is this. When you press this button, you switch to a new mode, which is called user mode. And this was called editor mode. Um, and when in user mode, whenever you push buttons on the right or left keyboard, that will be sent to those two components, which are the UI inputs of my circuit. And likewise, whenever you send something to these two, which are the UI output of my circuits, the light will light up in user mode. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to put my two UI inputs here and I'm going to wire them straight to the corresponding output. And when I do that, when I press buttons, the same button lights up. But for example, I could also cross wire them. So put the second input to the first output and so on. And now when I press buttons on a keyboard, the corresponding button will light up on the other keyboard. So just like audio signals, you can use components to transform the way UI signals are handled. So those components I've put on that row, and I'm going to show you the first one. So first I'm going to duplicate uh, the input, the right input on both of my keyboards. And then I'm going to show you the first, and it's actually not working, since that should light up too. Um, there you go. And then I'm going to show you the first UI component, which is a mirror, which uh, will reverse, I'll show you like this. I'll put a mirror on the left output and when now I enter some kind of pattern on the right, it's mirrored on the left. Uh, my second UI component is a toggle, um, a, like a toggle latch in uh, logic circuits, which you may already know if you've seen my previous video. And what it does is this. I'm going to apply a toggle to both of my inputs and then send the output of the toggle to the corresponding output. What happens now is when I press a button, it will light up. And when I press it again, it will turn off. So that, for example, allows me to draw shapes on my keyboards. And I can change the shapes like this. OK, uh, now the last UI component we'll need is this one. It takes two inputs. It's a logic R. And what it's used for is to take two UI signals and merge them together. So for example, what I'm going to do is going to take the right um, toggle output and combine it, merge it with the left toggle output and put that on the left UI output. And what you see here is that signal merged into the left one. OK, I think we've seen pretty much everything here. So what I'm going to show you now is uh, an actual program that can be made on this thing. So first, I'm going to take my two user interface inputs. I'm put, going to put them here. Oh, there is one last component I have not showed you. But I think I'll show you this a little later. That's the synth. OK, um, what I want to do now is to implement a uh, jammer keyboard configuration, meaning I want to play notes on the left and on the right, same thing with the same fingering. So what I'm going to do is take my two UI inputs and take them one row lower. Then I'm going to merge those two signals. 
then I'm going to transfer this with a wire, then I'll split back the signal on the two keyboards. What happens is I can do the same thing on the left and on the right, and it will show on both keyboards. But now it's not symmetrical. So what I need to do is apply a mirror on my left input, and then apply another mirror on the left output, which, by the way, is called a conjugation in uh, group theory. And now what I have is a symmetric behavior, which allows me to do the same thing with the same fingering on both keyboards. Now I'm going to show you the last component, uh, which is a synth. It takes one input, UI input, and it will have an audio output. So I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to wire its input from there, and I'm going to wire its output to the output of my circuit. And now what you get is... notes. And you can play on the symmetric jammer keyboard type configuration. So that's first part of the program. I'm going to make it a bit more interesting by adding an effect here, an echo that you've already seen. So I'm going to use um, a mixer and I'm going to loop back the output of my mixer using two delays and one damper. And then I'm going to pipe the output of my synth to the input of my echo and the output of my echo to the output of my circuit. And now we get a delay, um, an echo effect. And the last part of the program I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to create a big loop using 16 delays that I'm going to put like this. that and then I loop back to the beginning. And whatever is sent inside that circuit is going to go around the loop and again. And I'm going to use that to store user interface events. So I'm going to send the user interface event coming from my keyboard and merge them with what's already inside the loop and send the output of this to my synth. And what happens is then except that you light up and it doesn't because it doesn't include the output of the loop so now there you go and you can store you can store new notes in the loop then I'm going to disconnect the input of the loop and merge the output of the loop to my synth and that will allow me to play new notes but you know that already now I'm going to show you one last fun thing is I'm going to use a mirror on the output of my loop to reverse what's inside So I've just reversed the user interface signal coming out from my loop and it changed the melody, for example. Okay, I guess we've seen pretty much everything. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'm going to publish the um, source code of this program shortly on my website. I will put the link on the page. And if you like it, please uh, share and comment. I thank you. Goodbye.